welcome back to my huge channel everybody today we're talking about my favorite topic of the year which is trends we all love trends we love to make fun of them we love to participate in them we're talking about 2023 trends but i asked you guys on instagram because i wanted to make this a neutral thing i asked you what you what are your most hated trends and what are your most loved trends of 2023 and I don't know why, but I haven't received a single trend you're positive about. I received a lot of hate about trends that you just don't like. And I have to admit, I get you guys. So I asked you guys what you love or hate. You chose yin and not yang. You chose darkness. You shall receive darkness today. We're going to speak about the darkness of fashion trends in 2023. So what was mentioned the very most, I think it was mentioned, I don't know, very, very often. And I feel you absolutely 100% of parachute pants. You know parachute pants? The ones that you can get on Amazon Fashion now? And it's not even the reason that they're on Amazon Fashion that we don't want to see them anymore. But first and foremost, before we talk about the pant itself, stop wearing them. Stop wearing them whenever you bought them. Stop wearing them when they suit you because they will, because they make a good body on everybody. So it really fits to everyone. They're comfortable. Yeah, they're, they're, they're very comfortable. They usually have an elastic band. Uh, the colors are nice. It's usually neutral shades like khaki, beige, sometimes black. Um, it has seemingly a lot of positive points about it, but stop wearing it. I don't want to see parachute pants on the streets anymore. It looks ridiculous. It looks uh, like exactly what they are. Like you have no clue on how to dress or how you want to dress. So think just a bit more and just stop wearing parachute pants. And you know what? It's not that I don't have them in my wardrobe. It's not that I don't have parachute pants in my wardrobe, but I'm not wearing them anymore because I'm a good girl now. The thing that parachute pants gave us what they gifted us is that they're actually like jogger pants in parachute disguise so we have the feeling we're wearing normal proper pants but it's absolutely not normal pants it doesn't look like a normal pair of wool pants or cotton pants the good ones with the good fit you know the ones that you can buy from menswear with what i usually do because the fit is a bit more baggy what i like you know they're comfortable too and you don't have an elastic band pants with elastic bands Get them out of your wardrobe. Elastic bands are not doing you a favor. They're lying to you. They're lying to you that they're comfortable, that you can almost sleep in them, that you can be on the couch with them. They're not helping you. Do not buy pants with elastic pants unless they're extremely well tailored, made, fabric is crazy. You're like, okay, it has a lot of plus points. Parachute pants are also this. They're jogger pants in disguise. What we just need to be aware of is that we need to differentiate between cargo pants and parachute pants. I'm wearing cargo pants right now. This is actually a pair from Uniqlo Men's. It's one of my favorite pieces lately. Uh, if you know my old video, I'm usually buying the ones from Carhartt, which I absolutely love. But I have to say the Uniqlo ones, especially because of the fabric, are very comfortable. It's not parachute pants. Even if we look at fashion history, for example, if we look at Ralph Lauren, 1988, runway, fall, winter, we see some looks that are strongly inspired by military and cargo pants kind of looks. We also see it in a beautiful Balenciaga Nucleus Gasquer 2002. It looks like summer to me, but I'm not sure if it's fall or winter. Uh, show where he had several cargo pants and this is like this hit the spot and this already also explains why we see parachute pants right now so often so uh, the Ralph Lauren runway was of course 80 80 so 88 so we're not like um, being influenced by that runway show in particular since we're doing Y2K right now that's also the reason why we of course see this pant coming back from the dead again so parachute pants of one of this even though it was more like cargo pant inspired but there were different kind of fabrics also more flowy fabrics so it was more like wrapped together and not the harsh fabrics and the sustainable fabrics we know from military um it, it came back and, and even later in the junior watanabe show 2006 deconstruction and reconstruction we know this is actually overall in junior watanabe's work a very essential piece that turns the pieces into very timeless pieces and it's very hard to 
to analyze uh, what age Junya Watanabe is or from what year the collections are because I think it's a very timeless collection. And we're speaking of two, 2006, so we see like 2002 was Nicole's Best Care already, six was Junya, it was a very cargo inspired time, you know, that in R&B culture and hip hop culture, very wide pants uh, were very common. So it influenced us like crazy back then. And now, since the trend cycle is usually 20 years, so we're speaking of 20 years when we speak about trends, usually 10 years to forget the nastiness, like the abuse, and 10 years to miss it again. So after 20 years, usually a trend comes back. And that's why we have parachute pants right now. And the thing I think with the parachute pants is just like, it's, I mean, of course, I know there are a lot of very low quality cargo pants as well, but I think it's a different degree when it comes to parachute pants because it's really... I mean, it's not nylon fabric usually. It's usually a very cheap kind of fabric. Um, the design is not as distinct or refined. So we find a lot of bad looking versions. And that's why we don't want to see this trend anymore. So stop it. Don't go to a fast fashion retailer and get one. Get instead a very good cargo pant. Have it a bit baggy and just look very cool in it. So the next trend you guys um, don't like. And I was a bit surprised because it's not that old of a trend uh during this year it's the flowers around necks and hips uh, mainly the roses what we see uh, and that's interesting because i feel like right now it has its peak in fast fashion and mass fashion Ma fast fashion and mass fashion sounds um interesting no but i feel like it has its peak okay it's kind of creepy what I actually like about the trend is if it's easily DIYable, so you can easily create it yourself and participate if you want to. You can get a little glimpse of like this common trend right now, and if you don't want to, you can just throw it away because it's not it's not a lot of fabric or anything. You can actually do it from everything, from every dead stock fabric you have at home. But speaking about this, I know what you mean. First, I mean, I would say the most influential brand that created the rose in most recent times as a brand identity feature is Magda Butrim. It's a Polish brand, beautiful pieces. Um, I think if you are a bit into like uh, romantic, uh, feminine and um, like a bit 80s inspired looks, you will really love this brand because they bring out like these short dresses with wide shoulders, deep cleavage, and then there are roses every everywhere. It's beautiful and they had uh, they were famous for their shirts and dresses and now they have it on their shoes as well and they're growing and I think I'm and I'm really happy about this because I know it's a small brand um, I think they kind of revolutionized it and bring it back as well but it's not a new thing of course if we talk about the rose itself it's we're actually talking about a rosette the thing is it is horrible how the internet is disturbing my my reality or my my felt reality because I'm so over it as well. I would absolutely never get a rose necklace anymore and I know how beautiful it is. I know we had it from Love as well. It was not a rose but an anturium where I also think it's a bit more creative maybe than the rose but on the other hand the rose is like a very common stylistic feature of like femininity and beauty and stuff so I, I get that you use it. It's It has something very fragile but strong like I'm not going to explain what a rose stands for. But I think it's interesting when, when, when Löwe also hopped on this trend as well, exactly, uh, actually, and also influenced it to be like around even more necks and hips right now. But also we have seen it at Coperni, we have seen it at Marni, uh, we have seen it, we are like, we have seen flowers at Marni, uh, like more like stickers, but it, flowers are staying. We still have it at Dries van Oden and we saw it even at, at Givenchy this time. So um that's actually another trend that we're going back to vulnerability fragility femininity like also in menswear everything gets more dreamy um especially in times of 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 anxiety and um unclearness and um, the thing is it is overpopulated on fabrics in my opinion i don't know if Coperni is trying to jump on this trend with their little roses uh, Marni has a very distinct style, but I think again, like the flower theme is not something new. Givenchy also has it. Prada, of course, since ever has the theme of flowers. And in the most recent campaign, we also saw their big celebrity ambassadors and the flowers. And I think it's very interesting because we have a very cool music. You should watch it on YouTube if you haven't seen it yet. And then you see like this flower and then the, the person next to it. And then this, it, it's a very intense dynamic they have there. It's it is a bit creepy almost 
but it also kind of shows you the strength of nature again like strength of nature turning into scientific uh, supremacy that we are trying to do it's very interesting what we're trying to do with plants this is the reason why these roses are so hip no it's just too tiktok and we need to stop with it now it's not your distinct style i would i would if you want to have something around your neck i would definitely recommend to take something else like even a different flower or the best case not a flower at all but just take something that represents your personality and not the personality of a million other people that's the most important thing another very funny thing that appeared several times and i needed to google it because i didn't know what was meant by it bloke core trend uh, so I wasn't aware what blowcore is, but when I googled it, I realized I know what it is, but I didn't know that was the term of it. So blowcore you might know if you're British, because it roots in British football culture. Uh, it's the trend of wearing like soccer, aka football, uh, tricots, uh, uniforms over like your jeans. And wearing is that like something stylish and cool. Uh, and I think that's very interesting because since ever i have a slight addiction for rugby shirts and i know that usually brands like i don't know ralph lauren or whoever are creating them uh, it's not those i still have in my mind the mark jacobs one i will never forget and a few years later i also saw like a, a magazine cover or an editorial where rihanna's wearing it and it just looked insane so since then i'm very much inspired by uh, by football gear and wear uh, this was specifically rugby and I have a very good friend actually here, photographer friend, who I also see wearing soccer tricots since last summer and I was like, cool, that's kind of interesting and then I saw it more and more, especially in London, so it's a pretty British style as I said. Um, where we also see it is uh, on Wales Bonner for example and I also saw that Commission, the New York City label has created some as well. So. It is definitely something that is evolving right now. I do think it's the coolest way to really wear an original one and not actually one from a fashion label. Uh, but on the other hand, I think it's kind of wannabe if you wear it just for the sake of fashion and I'm actually not a fashion fan, uh, actually not a soccer fan. So I'm kind of biased here. This is a trend, to be honest. I think it's cute. I don't know. I think it's nice to have it and to have like your loose pants over it. But still, in my opinion, you need to have a clue of football or soccer. If you do not have it, I'm not really digging it. The thing is also, you don't see it around Paris at all. So if I'm not being forced to see something too much, I don't get rid of it. Like I don't get fed up with it so quickly. That's why I'm kind of okay with it. And I think there are a lot of like nice versions to style it. But I just searched a bit on TikTok before starting with this video on Vlog Trend, etc. I also saw like already a lot of like true religion jeans, Ugg boots and like um, tricot on top looks uh, of course very Y2K inspired and I'm not such a big fan of this. So I think I will definitely not turn this into an essential piece. Still, I think we can get inspired by like some features of it like the v-neck. I think the v-neck is coming back and that's something we see also very often on these soccer shirts. I think the arms, like the cuts, have a look at where it's Bonner. I think some British brands are there, like Matching Rose also does it, um, uh, which are pretty inspiring, but I think you should try to uh, translate it into your different style that you have and not just wear it one-to-one. -one. The ones that can pull it off and that have a clue about football, go for it. But other than that, I don't think it's very authentic. Another thing that was mentioned pretty often, and I was a bit surprised about it because I didn't, I mean, I sense it, of course, from the wrong ways that this is a trend that is going more and more back. But I would not have expected you guys not to like it anymore. It's oversized clothing. I don't know how old you are, but are you aware what skinny clothing did to us? Are you aware of the collateral damage, skinny dressing, Eddie Sliman? Tom Ford, everybody in the universe between 1995 and 2011 had to us, it traumatized us. Like I'm literally traumatized by skinny fashion and Phoebe Philo in I think 2011 or 12, whenever she started at Celine, changed my perspective on fashion. Like that was the biggest influence on me personally. 
Um, so oversized dressing has of course a very big spot in my heart and I would say I still impl implement it in my wardrobe. Nevertheless, nevertheless, you're right. You're right. We're doing it for too long. And it's not that a trend usually survives 10 years and then people get bored of it. It's kind of the 10 years mark also. But we also exaggerated it to a point where I'm kind of bored by it. Uh, for me, it's for example, the fact that we have only high waist pants right now. Everything needs to be pleated. And I really miss the cleanness, the softness of the 90s that we had that the very clean and distinct forms of the 90s, like pants, you know, you cannot put a belt on it, super straight, no pleats, nothing. They end where they're supposed to end and that's it. Uh, this is something we lost a bit with the, with the many and strong fabrics of oversized fashion. Like I know that I usually buy jackets three to four sizes bigger. Like I have coats that are size 46 because I want to have a lot of fabric around me because you know, the, there's a German word for being rich in fabrics, which means reich betucht. And it means that you're yeah, rich in fabricated, which means that you, which is another form for telling somebody they're rich because they have the money for fabrics. So having like curtains, for example, used to be a, a symbol of, of wealth. And overall, I think this is something that oversized clothing also bring back to us like also the, the the focus on quality that we have that's like a different perspective on oversized clothing as well but I think it's a very important one and the more fitted clothing is I think something we're getting back with the quiet luxury and being more quiet in general what we see overall on the runway in my last video where I talk about Milan Fashion Week you also might have realized that everything is getting more minimalistic more to its core more logo as well more like branding as well but we, we're reducing on everything and we don't have, want to have any excess anymore. So we don't have any excess of fabric as well. So oversize is also a bit dying. Like we want to have forms that just show our physical form, like a coat that fits on your shoulder and goes down and ends where it's practical and isn't pants that are not three meters longer than they're supposed to. They just end where they're supposed to end. So you can wear a flat loafer underneath and not a plateau, even though we have plateau as well in the trends of 2024 but that's what i mean you know it's like oversized clothing is kind of not grown-up clothing anymore even though oversized clothing clothing was in 2012 grown-up clothing so we kind of got bored with it and i think it's just like a bit also the trend of being a bit more practical functional and a bit more yourself not hiding behind clothes anymore that is also coming with a more skinny fitting stuff i personally I'm wait, I'm, I cannot wait for it. I cannot imagine myself wearing ever skinny pants. Again, like skinny jeans, absolutely not. But I also don't wear white jeans. I do think we have a chance when it comes to shirts and blazers. Right now, I also sense that I less and less look for oversized blazers who've been following me for the last 15 years, I think, since I was in school. And uh, right now, I, I'm not craving any white blazers anymore, you know. It's, I think I want something very literal something that fits on me like my body type is so I would also say oversized fashion oversized clothing is dead coming from oversized clothing and I already mentioned quite luxury somebody mentioned a person which I think is pretty mean but also let's just talk about it because we're mean Sophia Ritchie it's such a show it's such a show it's extremely not honest it's not sincere it's not um it's pretty pretentious what we see right now what Sophia Ritchie is doing I still like it of course more than what she was wearing before but like creating this good girl image the problem I have with quiet luxury is also like that people have a certain perception of what feminine and male is and I think that's horrible. I don't want to see that. I don't want people to say this is a good girl outfit. This is a quiet luxury. You could have money in 10 years. You're probably going to buy real estate for your wife. She needs to have the Cartier ring. Does she have the little Rupiana sneakers already? Um, does she have them in Carmel Beige? Where's her MS25? Can you gift her one? 
Um, is the engagement ring three months uh, of your salary already? Do you have a summer house? Do you have a house by a lake? This is everything I sense of it and this is everything I hate about people and that is the crave for money. Um, is money important? Yes. Do I care about money? Yes. Do I talk about money? No. Is money only a tool for me to get the happiness I want by buying clothing? Yes. So if money in its essence is an important characteristic feature for you, don't talk to us, don't talk to me, don't talk to anybody on this channel. It's a bit disgusting. It's a bit disgusting and this is what quiet luxury means to me. And this is unfortunately what Sophia Ritchie means to me as well. So um, I don't want an ambassador. I think, it's hor I think it's horrible to have an ambassador for such a trend and she's making good money out of it so everybody that supports her or her whatever she's selling because i just looked at her tiktok and saw that she's trying to sell a lot of products she's having a good time right now like she's really having a good time right now of being um the cute uh the cute rich girl who has always been rich and is now just even richer so we should follow her so maybe we can get a bit of the spark of the wealth what the fuck no like no no sophia ritchie no sophia ritchie in 2024 please so two more trends to go the last one i kept for the end because it was the most mentioned one it is i don't know if it's polarizing but i think it's it was obvious that it was being mentioned before that we're talking about bows bows are technically everywhere right now like not only on your head how they used to be it's like on your clothing everywhere and everybody very quickly thinks they're very cute with it. I'm always very biased between I want everybody to dress the way they want. And on the other hand, I have the urge to to push people to share my opinion on things and only dress the way I want. So that's kind of my problem. It's kind of contradictional to what I said before. I do not think bows make anybody cute at all. I think people make themselves cute. That's what you can do. You can be cute by yourself. But bows don't really make you cute and they usually, um, what I again like just about this trend is it's something you can DIY so it's very easy to, to create yourself and it's very cheap and, and it's, not, it's not a big investment so it's okay to participate in it for a year or a few months, it's okay. And if you don't like it you just gift it to your niece. It's just like I don't think it is elevating even if you have like a very eclectic style which means that you combine a lot of different trends with each other and um, you have clashes of like streetwear culture, I don't know, very elegant features, historical impact, I don't know, music, arts, whatever and you combine everything. I don't think bows really have a very significant influence on it uh, in the right manner. And I think the main reason is that they're usually not very well executed also. That's also another problem with DIY that it can very easily look DIY in a sense. Uh, and I personally am not a big fan if things are not well executed. Uh, that means that I personally have very much an eye on quality and how something is merged and, and created and, and look at the stitches, I look at the quality and everything. And when I see like bows, like somebody is doing their hair and has just bows in it, it just isn't it for me. It's also a bit Harajuku style um, and I kind of feel like we all want to be extremely younger than we are right now. So I feel like a lot of people don't dress their age anymore and I'm the last person to tell anybody how to dress. Um, and if you feel like you're 10, you, you dress like you're 10, it's okay. But I think that's also a trend kind of right now, you know, also this cottage core trend, like everything looks like very cutesy, childish. We don't have the classical sexiness. I think it's coming now with the new trends, which I personally, personally prefer. So bows are for me an absolute no. Like I don't, I don't like bows so much, um, but that's my personal opinion. Coming to the last trend, I think it's hilarious because almost everybody around me is wearing it. And yeah, it's a brand from my lovely country, Germania. And it's a trend coming from Germany because of Adolf Dassler, who is the founder of Adidas. We're talking Adidas numbers and gazelles. Yeah, they're everywhere. 
And I think this was mentioned like 30 times. Like they're everywhere. You cannot unsee them anymore. And to me, the thing is, I was born and raised in Germany. So I grew up with Adidas Zambas. My brother was playing football. He was wearing Zambas. I know my brother-in-law was wearing Zambas. Uh, at one point, I had them as well. I think it was Zambas and not Gazelle. I think the design was also different in the 2000s. Um, I do have a personal connection to these shoes because it reminds me of my childhood and the boys that were playing football around me. And it was it was cool. It's a cool shoe. And I can never really hate on Adidas no matter what they release because it's like Adidas is a cool brand. Um, do I feel like the this shoe is being raped right now absolutely is it being raped yes it is like everybody's wearing it and i get it the thing is we also have the trend right now of the ultra flat sneakers so everything very clumsy very big like the balenciaga triple s is, are dying out right now so we also see for example in the Miu Miu fashion show with the new balance sneakers the next ones that they're going to release it's like ultra flat it's actually, again, more like football shoe inspired. And I also cannot see bulky sneakers anymore. I'm, I mean, I'm sure we see Dunlop sneakers soon. Like I was wearing Dunlop. I was wearing pointers. I just don't know. I think they were bought by Carhartt. Back then, they only had them at the Carhartt store. And you were cool and edgy when you were wearing them. And they looked a bit like Converse, but like from leather and a bit different. Um, I think the Zambas, uh, the, the thing was with, the, with like a trend piece is like it's usually being worn always the same way so if i see another person with like jorts white socks zambas uh, an old leather jacket and the cost bag i'm gonna shoot myself i think i will just shoot myself if i see another pair and i see another pair daily you know so i cannot run away the thing it, what i hate the most about fashion is when it's turning into something pretentious and i don't mean with this that you should not play a different role i love playing different roles i love to be sometimes very feminine you know ultra feminine that people are shocked because usually i dress in my only little cashmere sweater and my only little cargo pants and i like it casual but then i like to shock and be like very feminine and i like to shock and be like super prude and look like a nun and i like to sometimes be like a street boy and wear my hoodie and my sneakers and I love to play with different personalities but these are all my personalities like so why I tell you all of this is if you can implement the Adidas in one of these stylistic personalities amazing it will make sense it will not look weird if you find a template of style on TikTok and you put it on yourself with the Zambas, it will look ridiculous. It will just look ridiculous and um, you will not be happy with it. So you should not buy the Zambas then. Try to think when you see a trend piece, still if you would buy it if it wasn't in trend and if it makes sense in your wardrobe. If it doesn't reflect your personality, you will not be happy with it. You will wear it five times and because you bought it and you paid money for it and then you will try to sell it on, I don't know, grail, vintage, whatever. Um, that's, I think, the most important thing to make you not look ridiculous. Does it look cute with white socks? You can be like, yeah, I saw it, but you know what? It fits to me and um, I like to wear it the way other people wear it. That's cool. If you're like, this fits to me, then wear it like this. Then you got inspired and you just duplicate it but that's fine. Like you don't have to have a crazy creative process. But if it doesn't fit to your style and you're trying to participate in a trend to be perceived in a certain way or to feel like you are part of a certain group, don't do it. It's take this, take this money and the time to work on your own personal style because nobody will recognize you. Nobody will recognize you if you're just another sheep in the masses. Work on yourself. You need to have a distinct look for yourself. People need to recognize this is, I don't know, XYZ's look. This is Nikki's look. This is Justin's look. But, and not this is the look I love from vi which vintage store did you get this motorcycle jacket? Surprise nobody mentioned motorcycle jackets, by the way. It's horrible. So, these are the trends you mentioned. I think it was hilarious. I had a good time. They were mentioned way more. 
Um, maybe I just tell you which others were mentioned. I just talked about the ones I personally love the most. Um, other things that were mentioned was nails, manicure. Uh, since this wasn't a typical fashion topic, I didn't want to speak about it. Also because it's a very political topic because <clears throat> nails, nail trends come usually like from the 80s, also from hip hop culture. And it's being perceived very differently now that it's like a European trend. And that's of course, again, very unfair because we see when a trend roots in a certain community, it's perceived as being perceived as vulgar and suddenly somebody else is wearing it and it's like something super prestigious and cool and this is horrible and this is also why I didn't want to just squeeze it in here because I think like nail art is something we had since the Egyptians by the way um, so it's not a topic we can speak so quickly about but nail art is also very interesting a different topic was Birkenstocks um, I think we talked so much about Birkenstocks that I didn't want to talk about it anymore but of course Birkenstocks Lo we love them or hate them. I personally hate them, by the way. I'm, I'm not a Berkey girl. Uh, Alaya Ballet Flats, interesting. Uh, hate them. I personally, I cannot also, very sad for everybody who has them. I'm sure they're beautiful to wear and stuff, but uh, it doesn't represent what I want. Oh God, I forgot what Daniela said, the Louvre wicker bag. You know the wicker bag everybody has that also Celine and I think every other company in the world created because it's very cheap to, to produce and little girlies like it because it looks like a picnic bag and it's also the cheapest handbag you can get from a designer which is like one fourth of the price that the other bags are so I buy it and I have a big logo on it yeah that bag exactly we don't like it mesh flats ah uh, this one got me to be honest mesh flats um, kind of digging it Underwear as pants and uh, underwear as pants was mentioned. Prada core, we love it. Jorts. And somebody said what I loved. Um, jorts with long boots, I, I will kill myself. This, yes, true, 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 true. We hate it. And I think ah, metallic looks, um, very hard. I think very hard to pull it off in a good way. Y2K, uh, these were the ones I wrote out. And I think this was pretty funny. Let me know in the comments what trend you don't want to see in 2023 anymore, or what you're happy that is dead or will be dead for 2024 for sure. Uh, I will do a 2024 trend predictions uh, video. Let me know how you like this and follow me on Instagram or here or on my Discord channel. If you like to speak with like-minded people like me who are a bit crazy uh, and have certain kind of opinions and share them in a chat with the random people, but we love each other, so we're cool people. And um, don't, for don't forget to subscribe like usual. <laughs>